on OKC. Highly regarded and often performed in Ireland, it was first staged at the Abbey Theatre in Dublin in 1924. It is set in the working-class tenements of Dublin in the early 1920s, during the Irish Civil War period. The word, peacock, is the Irish pronunciation of, peacock, which is what Juno accuses her husband of being. Sean O'Casey Irish Sean O'Cathasay Anne O'Kashi, born John Casey, the 30th of March 188,018 September 1964, was an Irish dramatist and memorist. A committed socialist, he was the first Irish playwright of note to write about the Dublin working classes. The Irish Civil War Irish Cagod Cathartha na the 28th of June 1922 the 24th of May 1923, was a conflict that followed the Irish War of Independence and accompanied the establishment of the Irish Free State, an entity independent from the United Kingdom but within the British Empire. The Civil War was waged between the Provisional Government of Ireland and the Irish Republican Army IRA, over the Anglo-Irish Treaty. The Provisional Government, which became the Free State in December 1922, supported the terms of the treaty, while the anti-treaty opposition saw it as a betrayal of the Irish Republic which had been proclaimed during the Easter Rising of 1916. Many of those who fought on both sides in the conflict had been members of the IRA during the War of Independence. The Civil War was won by the pro-treaty Free State forces, who benefited from substantial quantities of weapons provided by the British government. The conflict may have claimed more lives than the War of Independence that preceded it, and left Irish society divided and embittered for generations. Today, two of the main political parties in the Republic of Ireland, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, are direct descendants of the opposing sides of the war. It is the second of his. Dublin Trilogy, the other two being The Shadow of a Gunman 1923, and The Plough and the Stars 1926. Act 1 Juno and the Peacock takes place in the tenements of Dublin in 1922, just after the outbreak of the Irish Civil War, and revolves around the misfortunes of the dysfunctional Boyle family. The father, Captain, Jack, so called because of his propensity for telling greatly exaggerated stories of his short career as a merchant seaman, is a loafer who claims to be unable to work because of pains in his legs, which mysteriously appear whenever someone mentions work. Despite his family's poverty, Jack spends all his time and money at the pub with Joxer Daly, his ne'er do well, buddy, instead of looking for a job. The mother, Juno, so called because all of the important events in her life took place in June, is the only member of the family currently working, as daughter Mary is on strike and son Johnny is disabled, having lost his arm in the War of Independence. Mary feels guilty about dumping her boyfriend and fellow striker, Jerry Devine, who feels more strongly for her than she does for him. Meanwhile, Johnny agonizes over his betrayal of his friend Robbie Tancred, a neighbor and former comrade in the IRA, who was subsequently murdered by Free State supporters, Johnny is terrified that the IRA will execute him as punishment for being an informant. Near the end of the act, one of Jack's relatives dies, an A-school teacher, Charles Bentham, brings news that the Boyles have come into a large inheritance, Bentham notes aloud that the will names, John Boyle, my first cousin, of Dublin, as one of the beneficiaries. Overjoyed with the news, Jack vows to Juno to end his friendship with Joxer and change his ways. Act 2 A merit two days after receiving Mr. Bentham's news, Jack has already begun flaunting his newfound wealth by purchasing a new suit, new furniture, a gramophone, and other luxuries on credit, in anticipation of receiving the inheritance. The Boyles throw a party and invite Bentham, Hoy's courting Mary. Joxer is present, Jack having already forgotten his vow to break off contact with him, and Mrs. Maisie Madigan, a neighbor to whom Jack owes money, shows up after having been invited in Act 1 during the party. Robbie Tancred's funeral procession passes the tenement, but the Boyles and their guests halt their carousing only when Tancred's grieving mother stops at their door. Juno goes out to offer support to Mrs. Tancred, 
who delivers a monologue mourning the loss of her son and praying for an end to the war, but Jack selfishly ignores her suffering. Act 3 Months later, Bentham abruptly ceases all contact with the family and abandons Mary, who, it is revealed, is secretly carrying his child out of wedlock. While Jack is sleeping, Juno takes Mary to the doctor. Soon after they leave, Needle Nugent, the local tailor, storms into the flat and repossesses Jack's suit. Then Mrs. Madigan arrives, demanding repayment of the loan she gave Jack. When he refuses to pay, she takes the gramophone as recompense. Joxer who was present for both incidents, and did nothing to help Needles Jack about rumors that the inheritance is not forthcoming, this soon devolves into an argument during which Joxer openly mocks Jack's fortune as fraudulent. While Johnny upbraids his father for embarrassing the family, Juno returns alone and delivers the news of Mary's pregnancy. As Juno pleads with Jack to use the leftover money from the inheritance to move the family to a different city, he angrily reveals that they will receive nothing due to an error Bentham made while drafting the will he failed to include the beneficiaries' names, referring to Jack only as, my, first cousin. As a result, numerous relations are claiming the inheritance, which is rapidly being eaten up by legal costs. To make matters worse, Bentham has apparently fled the country out of shame. Johnny berates his father for his short-sightedness and avarice. Unable to cope with the stress of the situation, Jack disowns Mary and retreats to the pub to drink with Joxer. Johnny persuades Juno to follow Jack and beg him to come home. Mary returns, and Johnny disowns her as well. Jerry Devine shows up to patch things up with Mary, but he too renounces her when he learns of her pregnancy. As the last of Jack's fancy new furniture is being repossessed, several Ira men arrive and drag Johnny away, Juno later hears from Mrs. Madigan that a body resembling Johnny's has been found on a country road, riddled with bullets. Juno decides that Jack will never take on his responsibilities as a father and breadwinner, so she leaves to make a better life for herself and Mary. She sends Mary to live with a relative and, before going to the police station to identify Johnny's body, delivers a monologue that echoes Mrs. Tancred's in Act 2. Sometime later, Jack stumbles home from the pub with Joxer, extremely drunk and unaware that his son is dead or that his wife and daughter have left him. After a brief conversation, Jack accidentally drops his last sixpence on the floor, he drunkenly mourns that, the whole world is in a terrible state o' chassis, before passing out. I often looked up at the sky and, asked myself the question what is the moon, what is the stars, Captain Boyle, Act 1. Th. Whole world's in a terrible state o chassis, Captain Boyle, Act 3, the final line of the play. Never tired o' looking for a rest, Juno Boyle, Act 1. It's nearly time we had a little less respect for the dead, and, a little more regard for the living, Juno Boyle, Act 2. Isn't all religions curious? If they weren't you wouldn't get anyone to believe in them, Captain Boyle, Act 2. It'll have what's far better it'll have two mothers, Juno Boyle, Act 3. A darlin' noun, a darlin', repeat noun. Joxer's habitual exclamation throughout the play is he trivializes everything. It doesn't matter what you say, ma a principle's a principle. Mary Boyle speaking about the strike. He ought to be here. Johnny on Boyle's absence. 